Preparation. Always wear the correct PPE. Gloves, overalls, protective eyewear and safety boots. For roof installations, a dusk mask is advised. When using a ladder to access the water heater, make sure the ladder is firmly placed with nothing nearby that anyone could trip over. Isolate the electrical supply to the water heater on the main distribution board. Switch the isolator off at the electric water heater. Before isolating the water supply, switch off all appliances that use water. The water supply can be switched off using the main water supply isolation valve or the isolation fitted on the cold water supply to the water heater. Basic tools required. Two adjustable spanners, a pair of water pump pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, an adjustable pipe cutter, an electrical tester, a gas torch. Required components. These are the components you will need. Two vacuum breakers, both 22 millimeters, one Konex female adapter, 22 millimeters, four 22 millimeter capillary elbows, two capillary tees, both 22 millimeters, three capillary 45 degree bends, all 22 millimeters, a 22 millimeter pressure control multivalve, 600 kBA, solder, a tape measure, some hemp, some flux and a paintbrush, PVC pipe, copper pipe, four planks of the correct size, copper bonding strip, a wet cloth, a drip tray, and of course your electric water heater, which includes a temperature and pressure valve, TP valve, and a drain cock. Preparing your water heater for installation. To get the electric water heater ready for installation, take the following steps. First, remove the water heater from the packaging, then remove the electrical cover that contains the TP valve and the drain cock. This is the renewable plug on the drain cock, and we use it to remove the protective end plugs from the water heater's hot outlets. Next, remove the cap on the cold water inlet, and then tie some hemp fibers around the fittings to make them watertight. But first, to help the hemp to grab firmly onto the thread, we need to scratch the thread with a hacksaw. Then we wind the hemp clockwise with the thread onto the cold water inlet and hot water outlet threads. Next, dampen the hemp with a wet cloth to make it hold the thread. And then it's time to apply some PTFE tape to the renewable port. First, give the port a bit of a scratch and then wind on the tape, taking care not to cross the thread and fit. Then fit the Konex female onto the hot water outlet, the one with the red collar, and tighten by turning it clockwise. Next, we fit the TNP valve or temperature and pressure valve onto the white collared outlet. Here we are tightening both fittings with a pair of water pump pliers but a shifting spanner is also suitable. The next step is to fit the drain cock to the cold water inlet. First, we scratch the thread with a hacksaw to roughen for the hemp, apply the hemp, and fit clockwise. Now we tighten with the drain cock turned to a 45 degree angle as it should not be positioned vertically above the element cover. Roof installation. To install your water heater in a roof, follow these steps. Here we are demonstrating on a tabletop to allow for filming. First, we place these four support planks on the roof trusses, positioned over two load-bearing walls. The placement should allow easy access to both sides of the water heater. Space the first three planks evenly and ensure that the water heater's brackets are in the center of the planks when fitted. The fourth plank should be placed on top of the third plank at the back end of the tray to create a gradient fall for the tray's outlet pipe. You'll need to use much longer planks for an actual roof installation, spread over three trusses and nailed to the trusses. Then we place the drip tray on the planks and check that the drip tray is tilted at a 1 to 40 gradient towards the outlet of the tray. Three planks are needed under the water heater, 
with the center plank required to support the drip tray in the event that the heater blows. Next, fit the water heater tray outlet using PVC weld to the overflow pipe, which should run downward to the outside of the building. It should be supported by roof trusses all the way to the outlet. Finally, test the overflow by running water into the tray and ensuring the connection is leak free. Next comes the material installation process. First, we will pipe up the cold inlet of the water heater and include an anti-siphon loop. The anti-siphon loop, together with the vacuum breaker, will ensure the water heater doesn't drain if the water supply is cut off. Make sure the upper part of the pipe is pointed straight upward and adjust the angle by turning it if you need to. But the T-joint must be placed level with the top of the water heater. So, using the adjustable pipe cutter, we cut the pipe to the required length. We also scrape out the burrs that form inside the cut pipe using the deburring side of the pipe cutter. At first, we cut the pipe and put the fittings in without flux, just to ensure that the lengths are correct. Next, we continue by checking the length of our cold water pipe, which runs across and then connects downwards to the cold water supply in the property. Our pipework is now cut and the measurements are correct. That means we can remove the fittings and pipes in order to prepare them all for soldering. Use a scratch pad or fine sandpaper to clean both the inside of the fitting and the outside of the pipe. Then apply flux to both surfaces. Flux is corrosive, so it must be applied with a small brush and not with your hands. Before you begin soldering, you must put on safety glasses and heat resistant gloves. Apply the gas torch flame until the flux paste becomes liquid. After each solder is complete, give the pipework a minute to cool before wiping it with a wet cloth to remove excess solder and flux. Next, we will install a 600 kPa high pressure control and relief valve if the main supply line does not already have one. First, fit a T-piece that will supply cold water to the water heater from the property and then fit into the T-piece the 600 kPa high pressure control valve. The incoming cold water main will enter this pressure control valve which will control the inlet pressure and also supply expansion relief when the water heater heats up. The next step is piping up the hot water outlet connection as well as the TP safety discharge piping. It's important that there is 20 centimeters of pipe between the hot water outlet and the safety valve for the vacuum breaker in order not to melt the vacuum breaker. Remember to ensure that the vacuum breaker vertical pipe is 30 centimeters above the tank. Next, we fasten the Konex fitting onto the pipe. It's now time to fit the vacuum breaker valves on the cold and hot pipework. These valves prevent self-siphoning during a water supply interruption. The vacuum breaker must be positioned at least 30 centimeters above the water heater's highest point. Next, we pipe up the TP valve discharge pipe. This requires an approved metallic pipe and must be piped to a safe location at the exterior of the building. It cannot be plastic. The pipe also cannot have any 90 degree bends, only 45 degree bends. Its maximum length must be 4 meters with a 22 millimeter diameter. If the pipe is any longer than 4 meters, then a larger bore pipe is needed. And lastly, we fit lagging to the pipework. According to the regulations, all hot water piping should be lagged with R1 class lagging. For 22 mm copper, that's a 25 mm wall thickness lagging. Ideally, the lagging should not be cut, but where that's not practical, it should be mitered and then taped up with an approved UV stable tape. Electrical connections. We need to turn off the power supply. First, the isolator on the DB board or the circuit breaker needs to be switched off. And then the isolator next to the geezer needs to be switched off. Then we remove the isolator from the box and test it for power to ensure there is no voltage on the live side of the isolator. Now that it's confirmed that there's no power, we can continue wiring the isolator up to the thermostat. So we connect the live, neutral and earth wires to their correct points. We refit the isolator cover. And next we're going to fit this gland to the electrical cover and then fit the cable through the gland and connect it to the thermostat. 
noting the live and neutral points on the thermostat and the correct orientation of the connections. Then we must make sure that the connections are tight to avoid hot connections. And then we crimp the earth lug to the earth wire and fit it back to the flange. Now we're going to fit electrical bonding from the same earth lug on the flange to the cold water pipe. The bonding serves to ensure an electrical connection should there be no water in the water heater. The nuts and bolts used to secure the bonding must be made from brass, not steel or any other metal, so as not to cause corrosion between the screw material and the copper of the pipe. Check that all the hot and cold water taps are closed except the hot water tap on the bath. Once the water heater's pipe work has been completed, the cold water supply can be opened to fill the water heater. Once the water heater is filled and all the excess air has been expelled, allow the water to run for a few seconds longer to ensure that all the excess flux paste residue has also been flushed out. Then close the hot water tap at the bath and allow the water heater to be pressurized. Allow the installation to settle for a few minutes and check all the pipe joints to confirm that they are leak free. Now it's time to switch on the power at the DB board and then switch on the isolator. Once that's done, we use our meter to test the connections A and B on the thermostat to see if there is voltage. There should be 220 volts. And finally, we use the clamp or tong tester to confirm that the element is drawing current. Now that our electrical connections are completed, we can close the cover. Registering the product. Registering your product allows our service department to communicate seamlessly with you and react quickly to any warranty call that you might need to make. Either you or the installer can register your product online. First, locate your QR code on this sticker which will be placed either below this big information sticker on the end of the heater cylinder or just around the corner on the rim of the lower wall. And then you take your smartphone, you open your scanner app and scan the QR code. You should receive a pop-up notification taking you straight to our webpage and there you will find a form in which you enter your information along with the serial number of the product. Please ensure that your information is correct and submit.